Hi there, it's David Williams, and the topic of today's video is D latches and D flip flops. And we actually see right here the logic gate implementation of a gated D latch. We've got our D input and this E input, which is an enable signal. And we've got our Q output and the Q bar output, which are going to be opposites of each other. And we see we've got four NAND gates, plus we've got some some of the output, the Q and the Q bar output, are being fed back into those logic gates. Now we're not going to go into exactly how this particular arrangement of gates makes it makes this a D latch, but I will in, in a future video. Today's topic, we're just going to look at the functionality of D latches and D flip flops. Now what I'm drawing here is just the block diagram for a gated D latch. It's got a D input and it's got an enable input and it's got a Q and a Q bar output. So this is my gated D latch. Now if we were to break this thing open, what we might what we would find on the inside or the way a way that we could implement that this is with a an SR latch. This is one possible way we could implement this gated D latch. We have an SR latch with our Q and our Q bar inside this gated D latch here. So here's my D input and here's my E and my enable input and oops I guess I need an enable on this gated SR latch here as well so the enable signal is going to just go directly to the enable my D input is going to come in it's going to go to the S but it's also and it's also going to go to the reset but it's going to go pass through an inverter first so if my enable, if my D here is a 1, I'll have a 1 go to the S and a 0 go to the R. And if my D here is a 0, I'll have a 0 go to the S and a 1 going to the R. So a 1 sets and a 0 resets. But that setting and resetting only occurs if my enable is a 1. So here's uh, a timing diagram example of what happens for this, for the, in this gated gated D latch. So I've got my D, I've got my enable, I'm just going to deal with Q, because the Q bar is going to be the exact opposite of Q. Okay, so my D, let's make my D do something like this, and my enable, let's make it do something like this. And my Q will figure out what Q has to do. So, the basic idea is that if enable is high, the value of D is going to get passed into Q. If enable is low, Q is going to just stay at whatever value it was. So let's say Q starts low. Okay, so Q can't do anything until enable is high. So let's look at here, at this particular point, enable goes high, so we look at what value D has. D is high, so the value of D gets passed through to Q. And D stays high until up to this point when enable goes low, and so now it doesn't matter what D does, Q is going to stay high. Well, enable goes high right at this point here, and D, we look at the value of D, it happens to be low there, so the value of D gets passed through to Q again. And enable is still low, still low, D is still low, still low, and then right at this point here, enable is, sorry, enable is high, enable is still high, and D goes high, so Q is also going to go high. Enable goes low right at this point here, so now Q is just going to maintain its high state until enable goes goes high again. Oh, enable goes high here, and the value of D gets passed through. D happens to be low at that point, so Q becomes low. Enable goes low, so Q is going to maintain its value no matter what D does. So that's what my output is going to be. So we could do a, a sort of truth table over here too. I've got my two inputs, my D and my enable, and I've got my Q. The Q output. So, if enable is low, doesn't matter what D is, Q is just going to keep its value. If enable is a 1, and D is a 1, Q is going to become a 1. If enable is a 1, and D is a 0, Q is going to be a 0. And that's all that a gated D latch, ta gated D -latch truth table looks like. Hopefully with these these simple rules you could figure out what the timing diagram output for, for any, any particular timing diagram is going to look like. Now the next thing that we're going to look, like, look at 
are D flip flops. And D flip flops are very similar to D gated D latches, except of, except instead of being able to change when your the enable signal is high, flip flops only change the value from the D can only get mapped to the value for to the output Q when the enable signal on the on the edge of the enable signal. So that means either on the right when the enable goes from a low to a high or when it goes from a high to a low. And to see how that happens, let's take a look at this circuit here. Now this is not this could be part of a D flip flop. And what we're going to do is just take a look at the timing diagram for this signal and and take a look at how this input gets converted into an output pulse. And we're going to look at this uh, as it goes through these NOT gates. And now you're probably typically used to a NOT gate having the bubble on the output. Well, it's a bubble on the input here. These are still inverters. And one thing we have to keep in mind is that for each one of these circuit elements, there's going to be a little bit of a delay from the time that the input changes to the time that the output changes. So in my, in my output of my inverter here, for the NOT1 gate, what I'm going to get is going to be the opposite of the input going to look like this, and then the input changes, but there's going to be a little bit of a time delay here before the output changes. And then it's going to maintain the opposite value until this point here. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay there from the time that the input changes to the time that the output changes. And now the next step, this signal here is the input, and this signal here is the output. So again, it's the inverse of it. We start low. At this point here, not one changes, and a little bit later, not two is going to change. And again, here, not one changes. A little bit later, not two changes. And then over here, we've got not three, which is the inverse of not two. So we're going to start high. At this point here, not two changes. A little bit later, not three gets flipped. And then over here at this point, not two changes, the input changes. A little bit later, not three changes. So even though we've got an input and then that's the inverse of the input, the input, the inverse of the input. So input ended with the inverse of the input should always give us zero. But because of this propagation delay through each one of these gates, we're going we are going to have the instance where at this this short period of time between that point where the input's high and this point where the not three is still high where they're both high so inputs high and not three is high for this short period of time so what we're going to get on the end is be low 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 and at this point here they're both high for a brief pulse and then it's low for the rest of the time So on this rising edge of the input, what we get is a brief pulse here at the output. So if we take that same delayed triple inverter circuit and apply it to the enable of a D latch, an enable a gated D latch, we end up with a D flip flop. And just to look at the comparison between the two, there's my D flip flop, there's my D latch. So my D latch, whenever B is high, the output the value for D, whenever an E is high, the value for D is going to get mapped to Q. Over here, whenever again, it's still the same thing. Whenever E is high, the value from D is going to get mapped over to Q, but if but going back to our circuit up here, that E, which is the output of the, the gate and gate here, is only high for a very brief pulse. So effectively it's only on the rising edge of that B signal that we get a change that, that D is going to be able to be mapped to, to Q here. So look at the comparison between the two. Whenever B is high, A is going to get mapped into Q. So B is high here, Q goes high, A goes low while B is, while B is still high, so we go low there. We stay low at this point. B is high while and A has gone high. It's going to be high for a while here. At this point here, B is high. A is still high. And here, B is high. A has gone low. I'm going to stay low up until that point there. Q bar is going to be the exact opposite. So 
A got mapped to Q whenever B was high. But over here, because of this, this uh, triple inverted signal going into the AND gate, we only consider the, the output that's actually going into E. I'll draw E here. Only at the rising edge of B will I get a little brief blip where E goes high. A brief blip where E goes high. And down here, a brief little blip while E goes high. And finally, a little brief blip where E goes high here. So it's only at that instant in time, and I mean, it really is just an instant in time, that the value for A can get mapped over to Q. So let's say Q starts low. E goes high for a brief period of time, so then A gets mapped over to Q. Over here, E goes high for a brief period of time, that's where A is low, so A Q goes low. Q stays low until we get the enable going high again for this brief period of time where A is, and A is going to be high there. And then over here, for this brief period of time, A is low, so Q goes low as well. So a much different output signal when we're using this D flip-flop as opposed to when we're using this D latch. So the D latch, with the gated inputs like that, the not the gated inputs, but the triple inverted inputs, that leads to the D flip-flop. And we can actually create a new circuit block for the D flip-flop and that looks something like this. We've got a D input and here's our, our enable input but it's a special type of enable input that we call the clock and it's only on the rising edge of the clock that the D value is going to get mapped over to Q. So my truth table looks something like this. I've got D and I've got clock and so it's only on the rising edge of the clock that the value for D is going to get mapped to Q. So if on the rising edge of the clock, edge of the clock if D is a 1, Q becomes a 1. Again, on the rising edge of the clock, if D is a 0, Q is a 1. If it's not rising, so if it's falling or if it's not changing, it doesn't matter what D is. It can be a 1 or 0. Q is going to keep its value, whatever the value it happened to be. Q is going to stay at Q. could also have a falling edge D flip-flop. Okay, D Here's my clock again, but I put my bubble on the clock to indicate that it's a falling edge clock. So only on the falling edge of the clock that D is going to get mapped to Q. So if the, if the falling edge, I mean going from a high to a low, if D is a 1, then Q is going to become a 1. On the falling edge of the clock, if D is a 0, Q is going to become a 0. And if it's, if the clock it is not falling if we don't have the falling edge going from that instant where it's going from a high to a low doesn't matter what D is Q is just going to maintain its value. Okay, Let's do a couple of examples here. Here's my D signal and here's my clock signal and typically it's called a clock because it's this signal that just alternates low and high. It doesn't have to. I mean, it can be any any signal for the clock, but it's usually going to be this, this alternating low-high signal that's that's controlling the timing of when things change. So we're always going to look at the, the rising edge of the clock, and at the rising edge of the clock we look at what is the value of D, and whatever that value is, it's going to get mapped to the Q. For all these instants in time, let's say Q started low. At this instant in time, it's going to go high. This instant in time is going to go low. This instant at time, in time, it's going to be set to low, but it's already low. We set high here. We set high again, but it's already high. And finally, it's going to be set low here. Now, here's another interesting circuit. What what do you think this circuit's going to do? My D flip flop here my input coming in, I've got my clock signal my clock and let's say it's just a repeating clock like this and I've got my Q output here and I also have a Q bar typically I'm going to have a Q and a Q bar, or I could just say Q and put, pass it through an inverter and Q bar feeds back into D so what's going to happen, if this is my clock alternating low high and here's what's going to happen on Q bar 
So let's say D started low. So if D starts low on the first rising edge of the clock, Q is going to go low, Q bar is going to go high. So if Q bar, if Q bar started low on that rising edge of the clock, Q bar is going to go high. On the next rising edge of the clock, this value of 1 is going to be fed into, into D. It's going to make Q equal to 0, which means Q, sorry, Q is a 1 being fed into D. Q is going to become a 1, which means that Q bar is going to become a 0. And over here to the next rising edge, 0 is getting fed into D. Q is going to become a 0. Q bar is going to become a 1. And we're going to get another clock, another repetitive signal on Q bar that's half the clock rate that the clock is.